Before I knew it, the time had passed quite a while and I could see the sunset already. I told my daughter it was time to get out of the sea. At that moment, I didn't have a good feeling about everything that was going to happen. My husband Bill and my mother in law Lily's luggage was gone. Then, I heard the sound of a boat going forward with its engines roaring. What? To my surprise, Bill had got on the boat and left me and my daughter by the sea. Hey, why are you leaving us? I swam up to the boat in a panic, but even though it was a small boat, I couldn't catch up to it. And there was a possibility that I might get hurt if I tried to reach for the boat. It's not like we're related by blood, anyways, so this should be fine. When I got close to the boat, I suddenly heard Bill saying that, and I was so stunned. Then Lily looked out from the boat and said while laughing, Ha! Look at that dumb face! Bill looks at me with disdain. And then the boat left me and my daughter behind. My name is Lauren. And I'm a 32 year old housewife. I live with my husband, Bill, and our seven year old daughter, Jessica. Jessica is always working hard in her studies and sports, and she also practices hard every day for her piano lessons, which she has been learning since she was five years old. Jessica is really cute, and she's my treasure. My life with Jessica is full of happiness. But things were not going so well with Bill. Bill and I met about 10 years ago. I joined the company as a new employee, and Bill was two years my senior. We became close when my husband took on the role as my trainer for the OJT. I was attracted to him because he worked so hard and was carefully teaching me about my job, and we naturally got into a good relationship and began dating. After two years of dating each other, we got married. We had a great time as newlyweds. Bill took very good care of me, and I knew that he loved me dearly. When Jessica was born, he was saying, She's like an angel! and loved her. Because Bill loved her a lot, I thought that if Jessica says that she will get married in the future, he was going to faint or something. However, when Jessica was about two years old, Bill's attitude suddenly changed. He became very cold toward me and stopped caring about our daughter. I couldn't understand why. He would not talk to me and would not hold or talk to Jessica anymore. After about a month of this, I reached my limit and questioned Bill. Hey, why are you so distant from me and Jessica lately? Did I do something to offend you? I don't know what's causing you to be like this and it's really bothering me. I think I shouted something like that to Bill. That's how confused I was about the sudden change in Bill's attitude. Then, Bill calmly says this. Because that child is not mine. What? I couldn't understand what he meant. Jessica is truly our child. What are you talking about? Jessica is definitely your daughter. I told him that, but he wouldn't listen to me. Because she doesn't look like me at all, you know? That's not true. She's only two years old now, so you can't really tell, but I'm sure that her resemblance to you will become more obvious in the future. No, you're wrong. I won't be fooled. She has green eyes. Plus, her eyes are pretty big. Huh? I have blue eyes, so there's no way I could have a beautiful baby with green eyes like this. My husband's shallow reasoning left me in a state of shock. No, no, I mean, look at me. I have green eyes. 
So that means she has the eyes just like mine. When I said this, Bill looked a little convinced, but perhaps his pride wouldn't allow it. He didn't agree with me. You're probably trying to deceive me by saying that. That's not true. You really have to believe me. Eventually, Bill asked for some time to think about it and went back to his parents' house at that time. At that time, I remember that I began to question his thoughts and began to distrust him. I wondered if we could build a proper family together as parents, let alone a marriage. After returning back to his parents, it seemed like Bill had explained the situation only from his point of view, so Lily called me and cursed me, saying, You slut! After that, my in laws and I had a discussion at their house, and we decided to do a DNA test to find out about it once and for all. Bill says, Even if we don't do that, it's obvious, and I know that she's not my child. But when I insisted on having the test done, he reluctantly agreed. After the test, it turned out that she was also Bill's child. My husband looked at me unconvinced, saying, You're kidding. But my father in law, Pete, said, The results came out. Why don't you just admit it and apologize to Lauren? And because Pete shouted at him, Bill finally came to his senses. Lauren, I'm sorry I doubted you. I don't know what's come over me. Bill bowed his head and apologized, so I forgave him for now. I know some people would have gone for a divorce at this point, but I had become a housewife when I got married and was not making enough money, and I felt bad about taking Jessica's own father away from her, who was only two years old at the time. Besides, after all, I had married after having fallen in love properly, and I didn't want to just get a divorce right away. However, I would later regret that I should have divorced Bill at the time. Thus, I continued the married life with Bill, but there was a somewhat awkward atmosphere with him. Still, little by little, we began to talk more and more, and we began to feel like a married couple for the time being. However, Bill didn't seem to be able to open up to Jessica. When I say, Come on, Bill, play with her. He says, Uh, oh yeah. And it becomes somewhat awkward. He would play with Jessica for a little bit, but then he would immediately say, I think mothers are better for this, and passes her to me. In the end, Bill hardly ever played with Jessica as she grew up. When Jessica was about five years old, she was very curious and interested in many things. She read a lot of books and other things and always asked me questions when she didn't understand something. One day, she asked me about history, and I thought Bill, who was very good at world history, would be the better person to ask, so I told her that she should ask him because he knew more about it than I did. Then, Jessica ran to Bill and asked him the question. I went out of my way to help improve the relationship between Bill and Jessica, but he turned her away by saying, You'd get a better answer if you ask your mother. Jessica got confused and asks, Well, who should I ask? I went over to Bill and said, Hey, Jessica is asking you, so you should pay more attention to her. To this, Bill says, you're there for this kind of thing, so if you're there, then there's no need for me. I was indeed appalled to hear him say that. I wondered why he was so reluctant to spend time with Jessica. Jessica also seemed a little lonely because she was not being cared for by her father. I tried to find a way to make our family closer, but Bill would not make time for the family. Jessica is working hard at piano and studying, partly because she is a hard worker, but also because she wanted her father to pay attention to her. 
My frustration towards Bill grew, and one night, I took out my frustration on him. That's enough! Why are you trying to avoid Jessica? She's trying so hard to get along with her father. You haven't even come to her piano recital, not once. Even when I get angry with Bill, it's as if I'm trying to get him to do something he doesn't want to do. Then Bill just says, I'm letting her do whatever she wants, so I am fulfilling my role as a father. You're too cold to your own daughter. When I told him that, he said, I do wonder if she really is my child. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? We had the DNA test! Even though I said that, Bill still looked unconvinced and just went back to his room. How on earth could I get Bill to change his mind? While I was worrying over this thought, Bill suddenly says, Let's go on a trip to Hawaii with the whole family. He suggested that the five of us, including my in-laws, and we would go on the trip together. I was happy when I heard this. Bill was finally making time for his daughter and I. Jessica would now be able to make happy memories with her own father. When we arrived there, Bill told me that he had booked a boat and took me and my daughter to the port. It was a small but magnificent boat and I couldn't help but look forward to the day ahead as we pushed the boat forward into the sea. My daughter also looked at the boat with a bright smile. Bill also has a boat driving license, so we decided to take the boat to a nearby deserted island today. My father-in-law, Pete, wanted to buy something and to visit his friend who was living in Hawaii, so he didn't join this time. Thus, Jessica, Bill, Lily, and I decided to go to the deserted island. When we arrived to the deserted island, it was very beautiful. Jessica was very impressed. Bill had also prepared snorkeling equipment, and at first, he was happily diving into the water by himself. Then, after a little while, he invited Jessica and I to dive in with him. So I put on my gear and dove into the water, as I had done a few times before. It was Jessica's first time, so Bill was carefully teaching her. Seeing her like that made me very happy that Bill was finally becoming more like a father. Jessica also seemed happy to have her own father teach her. And soon enough, she was getting the hang of it. Bill said, I'm going to take a break and got out of the water so I washed my daughter to make sure she didn't go too far and enjoyed diving under into the water with her. Before I knew it, the time had passed quite a while and I could see the sunset already. I told my daughter it was time to get out of the sea. At that moment, I didn't have a good feeling about everything that was to happen. My husband Bill and my mother-in-law Lily's luggage was gone. Then, I heard the sound of a boat going forward with its engines roaring. What? To my surprise, Bill had got on the boat and left me and my daughter by the sea. Hey, why are you leaving us? I swam up to the boat in a panic, but even though it was a small boat, I couldn't catch up to it. And there was a possibility that I might get hurt if I tried to reach for the boat. It's not like we're related by blood anyways, so this should be fine. When I got close to the boat, I suddenly heard Bill saying that and I was so stunned. Then, Lily looked out from the boat and said while laughing, Ha! Look at that dumb face! Bill looks at me with disdain. And then the boat left me and my daughter behind. I quickly returned to the island and ran over to Jessica. Jessica looked terrified. Were we stranded here? I hugged Jessica, who was about to cry and rubbed her back, telling her that everything would be alright. 
But it is hopeless to be stranded in a deserted island. Fortunately, I had portable food in my bag, which would last at least a day or two, but not for a long period of time. Maybe someone would notice about us. With Jessica being there, I was able to keep my cool. Let's warm up for now. We could catch a cold since we were both wet from snorkeling in the water. I wiped Jessica's hair and body thoroughly with the towel I had brought and dressed her. And together, we brought a number of thin tree branches and gathered dead leaves to make a fire. I was glad I had brought a lighter for something. As I lit the fire with the lighter, it gradually spread to the dead leaves and tree branches. In this way, we managed to warm ourselves. But what if help never came? I couldn't shake the feeling of anxiety. It was at that time, about two hours after Bill left us, a small boat came towards us. I stood up hurriedly, waved my hands and shouted, HELP! over and over again. The boat stopped near us, and the owner of the boat came over to us. Are you okay? He called out to us and motioned for us to get on the boat. The man was a staff member of the boat shop that lent the boat to Bill. While we were on the boat, the man began to explain. The man said that when Bill returned the boat to him, Bill and Lily had left immediately, and right after, he suddenly thought that the number of people who had returned was not right. That made him worry, which is why he came over to the island to check. I was so relieved that I burst into tears. Jessica was sleeping in my arms probably because she was exhausted from fear. We made it safely back to the island where our hotel was located, and after thanking the people who came to help us, Jessica and I headed back to the hotel. When I got to the hotel, I met Pete in the lobby. Oh, Lauren, aren't you with my son and wife? Pete came over to see me, but when he saw how tired I looked, he immediately realized that something was wrong. Let's sit over there in the lounge, he says, and as we sat down, he listened to what I had to say. I told him that today we were left behind and that Bill has been cold towards Jessica for some time. After listening to me, Pete bowed his head and apologized to me. He told me that he would never forgive what Bill and Lily had done to us. When I think about it, Pete was the only one who always tried to confirm the truth when Bill suspected that Jessica wasn't his child, and Pete always loved his grandchild. He was my only ally. Pete says, Let's teach them a lesson. I agreed and went with him to the front desk of the hotel. Fortunately, Bill and Lily had not come back to the hotel yet, as they were probably having dinner somewhere. Since I was the one who made the reservation to the hotel, I cancelled my stay. Now, Bill and Lily wouldn't be able to stay here. Pete was planning to stay at his friend's place, who lives around here, and he was going to wait for us at the hotel to tell us about it. So, Pete says, Lauren, you should come with me. And took Jessica and I to his friend's house. His friend also had his wife, and they both welcomed us at their place. By that time, Jessica had woken up and was eating a home-cooked meal prepared by them. Then, I got a call that Bill and Lily had been caught by the police. This is because they had made a big fuss about not being able to check in at the hotel. The front desk rushed to report the incident and the police rushed to the hotel, but they protested aggressively, saying, We made a reservation! Bill and Lily probably protested because they didn't want to be taken advantage of, but 
If you don't obediently follow the police instructions, you be arrested. They asked Pete and I's help, but we refused. I told the police that the two had left Jessica and I on a deserted island. The police also took a statement from the staff who lent the boat as an evidence. As a result, Bill and Lily was both charged with a crime and were in quite a difficult situation. My husband panicked and managed to get a lawyer, but he had to pay a large bail amount and lost thousands of dollars overnight. Moreover, they were in jail for several days until they were released on bail, and both Bill and Lily were exhausted physically and mentally. It's a great feeling to get back to them like this. Because if the boat staff had not come at that time, Jessica and I would have suffered much worse. Jessica and I returned home ahead of the others, packed our belongings, and went back to my parents' house. Then, I confronted Bill, who returned right after us, with divorce papers through my lawyer, and also demanded alimony for the emotional distress he had caused my daughter and I. At that time, I asked him through my lawyer why he did what he did, and why he didn't pay any attention to his own daughter until now. According to the lawyer, Bill told me that he has suddenly lost all love for our daughter once he suspected that she was not his child. I was appalled and shocked to hear this. Even though a proper DNA test had been done, he still couldn't believe that Jessica was his own child. I regretted a little that I should have separated Jessica from such a horrible father way earlier. Bill was left to pay alimony and child support to me after the divorce, which left him in debt. Furthermore, I reported this incident to my former boss, who still works for the same company, so Bill's disgusting behavior quickly spread throughout the company, and he was identified as the guy who tried to leave his wife and child to die, and now, it seems like he is feeling very ashamed of himself. He's now in debt, so he can't really quit work, and the stress is getting to him. And Pete divorced Lily because of this incident. Lily, who had been living on Pete's salary, was thrown out of the house without a job, and she panicked and asked Bill for help, but he refused, saying that he could not afford it, so she is now living in a rundown apartment while working a part-time job. Meanwhile, I got a new job, rented an apartment just big enough for the two of us, and started living with Jessica. Jessica doesn't even think of Bill as her father anymore, and she gives all her affection and love to me. She practices on the piano every day, and says things like, I'm going to win the next competition for you, mommy. I'm going to work hard and earn money so that Jessica, who is so lovely and kind, can do what she loves with all my power. Leaving them on a deserted island is definitely a crime. I think Bill and Lily should be in jail. But I am so glad that Pete was a decent man. I hope Lauren will continue to be happy with her daughter Jessica. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.